Oh, hope everybody's having a good Sunday morning so far. It's cool this morning, feels good. Let me tell you, it gets hot down here in the south, so you got to get something done pretty quick. If you're going to get started, at least you got to get started early, and then that way, as the heat builds, you know, it's not so bad. If you get out there about, just walk outside about midday, though, let me tell you, it'll knock you in the dirt. Oh, I know y'all have seen me cut logs before, but we're going to cut, we're going to see what we can get out of this 15 inches. 15 inches at small end, 12 foot long. We're gonna see how many one by twelves we can get out of this thing. Oh, I'm way behind on stock, and I'm gonna try to start doing that. I love to cut. Oh, when the humidity's low, so I like to cut. Say September, October, November, December, and then it starts really raining down here. So you get the humidity back up, and uh, it's you know it, it doesn't the wood don't dry properly. You know it you'll, it'll mold and stuff like that. So. I'm going to walk you through this right here so is a cut and how I stack it and everything and uh, to air dry it. Oh, Paige, bless her heart, you know, she left two weeks ago and got to Canada and got sick. And they put her in the hospital and they, they tested her for Lyme disease. And it, you know, it, do, it didn't come back positive because the Lyme disease test is an old test and it, it doesn't always, you know, it doesn't always detect. There's there's a lot of different uh, varieties of Lyme disease and if it's not the exact one, then it won't come back positive and it didn't. But that's still probably what, they're 90% they're sure, 95% sure that that's what it is, Lyme disease. So she spent a week in the hospital. And I guess when she was, you know, when we were up in, uh, on the river, at the river cabin, we noticed a bite. I figured it was a chigger or a red bug, whatever you want to call it. But there was no tick. And my understanding was a tick had to be on you for 24 to 30 hours before you can it can actually transmit that disease to you. But this has got to be what it is because a month later, you know, she gets back to Canada and gets sick. You know, you can see she took a picture of it and you can see the bullseye around the bite. So has to be that right there. She's finally, she spent a week in the hospital. She finally got out and uh, she's feeling a little bit better. So I think she did a video yesterday. So she should have it uploaded today too, along with this one on my channel. So y'all check her out and, and see what's going on. And I'm gonna head up there Tuesday. You know, she took care of me for the whole time I was busted up with my neck and my back. Ooh, my stomach's growling, it's time to eat. But uh, now I'm gonna go up there and see if I can't tend to her a little bit and help her help her try to fight through this. Cause let me tell you, it this Lyme disease ain't no joke, folks. It's it's been tough. So y'all check her out and see what she's got going on, and then when we get up there, we'll try to do some fishing or some cooking or something. So anyway, hang in there. Let's see what's gonna happen with this log first. Let's get this cut up, and then we'll work on the Canadian fishing and cooking. All right, folks, let me explain something about this old mill. I bought it second-handed years ago. I don't know how many thousands of board feet I've cut with this thing, but it's a 1990 LT30 wood miser. Got a lot of people asking me about it. Oh, it doesn't have the hydraulic assist. You know, it doesn't turn the log and it doesn't, you know, the hydraulic dogs and everything. None of that's hydraulic. You have to do it by hand, but I've, I've done it so long with this mill I used to have a hydraulic mill and it was nice, but I've done it so long with this particular mill that uh, I think I'm actually faster than the hydraulics because I can jump over here, grab a PV, flip the log, and it's just, it's, it's a lot more work, but it keeps you, uh, you know, keeps you in shape anyway. But I hadn't been using this thing because you remember my neck, my back, and all that stuff, so. I'm just now getting back into it, and I've got to get caught up on my lumber cutting. But uh, it was, it would only cut 16 foot lumber, and I added six foot to the frame, took the axle out from under it, and ground mounted it right here. And that way I can cut 22 foot lumber now. So, super efficient. It's got old 18 horse bricks and stratton on it, and let me tell you, she runs like a sewing machine. Y'all hanging in, let's see what we're going to get out of this little old log.
All right, y'all, that was probably not the best log to do the demonstration on because it had been cut for a while and the bark was slipping on it. So as I, when I turned it one time, the bark ended up slipping up under that cant, that flat side that I just cut. So I had to jack it up and get that out. But I had y'all on fast motion, so maybe it wasn't too boring. Oh, I wanted to get 12 one by 12s out of it. It had a little crook in it that I didn't see. I ended up getting 10 one by 12s, two one by eights and a one by 10 out of it. Not complaining. But by the time I clear it up and get all the all the round off of it, I don't like uh, I don't like that round like you get when you go to the you know the lumber company you you know you get a two by six and it's 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 half bark on on one side I can't stand that so I try to clear everything up and when it hits that stack over there it's right so I don't when I get to building I don't have to pick through it and and cut this part of it out or whatever because it's got half bark on it and I want both sides clean and clear where I can work with it. If it does, if I, when I cut a lot of stuff like that, most of the time I'll make a stack and I'll make catfish boxes out of that part of it because so, uh, you know, catfish don't care if it's a little crooked or if it's got a little bark on it, they don't mind. It don't matter to them. Oh, uh, Woodmiser sent me some blades, some new blades, something they started doing, uh, carbide teeth. And I don't know if it was the, the two that I've gotten, but the, the two that I've used so far, they cut, they cut rough. They cut a lot rougher. They cut fast and they last a long time and you can't sharpen them. Either they, they get dull after a day's work or whatever and uh, or they, you know, the band pops or whatever and then you end up discarding it. But you can't resharpen them because that, uh, that grinder down there can't handle that carbide. But they do cut rougher, so if you like the saw marks, this is definitely the blade you need to give a try to, you know, with. But if you want it super smooth, no. Oh, you know, some of the other stuff they got cut super smooth, what I've always used, just now trying these out. But uh, it cuts fast, though. It does cut fast. And like I said, it's the, the blade life. You know, the, the board foot that you cut per blade is a lot more than you would one of these other ones. But one of these other, the older blades or the, the original blades that I used, I'd cut a 1,000 foot. If it was clean wood, I could get a 1,000 foot out of them. Most of the time, I'm going to say between 500 and 1,000 feet, just depending on what you're cutting. And then I had to resharpen it, which is fine, because I don't mind. It don't take but a minute to, to knock, the, uh, knock the hydraulic weight off of this band right here, pop it off and put a new one on it, and you'd be good to go again. But you can watch, and you can, you can listen to the engine and all that. You can tell when your blade's getting dull. You know, it'll start, you know, you can feel it laboring. I mean, it's getting pretty bad, and you're going super slow with it. Or when your blade starts dipping and diving, you can you can watch that and you know for sure that uh, that you need to change. But you can hit something. I've hit something with those original, you know, those other blades. You can hit one little nail and just clip it or something, and it'll chatter. It'll make uh, it'll make these saw marks. But uh, if you want, I mean, if you're going to run it through a planer, it's not going to make any difference anyway. But uh, I like it because I do like the saw marks. It looks more, you know, like the old circle saw and stuff. But yeah, 10, 10 one by 12, two one by eights, and a one by 10 out of, out of 15 inch log, that ain't too bad. Let's get these things stacked up. I'll show you how to stack them. Won't take but a minute and uh, get these things drying. All right, folks, here we go. This is not the way I would like for it to be, I would I would love to have a gap wider than this between these stacks, just because of the airflow. And I'll tell you, I'll explain that in just a second. Um, you want your foundation. It doesn't have to be level. It just has to be the same. It has to be flat. You know, if it's if it's at a level or if it's going down here like this one is, it don't matter. It's just as long as your your foundation's level, because that lumber's going to dry like that. So if you've got you got one on the end or two on the end down there that's like this, then that lumber with all the weight that you keep stacking on top of this and make sure it's a good foundation because it will bog it in the ground and stuff is heavy. But you don't want a twisted, you know, twisted lumber, so you want everything to be flat. I put a one inch stick between, uh, between them probably every three feet. It just depends on what you're cutting. I mean, if you're cutting thicker stuff, you don't have to have as much, but I like on one inch stuff. I like to go uh, about three feet between my sticks, and then that way it'll keep everything from warping in between because you don't want it to. And if it doesn't have that support in the middle, one of them might try it. Might, you know, they might get a little crooked. 
uh, the air gap between is simply if you stacking greenwood to greenwood and you're you're depending on the airflow to dry that lumber out and you don't have but this much room between the stacks then you're just pulling the the middle stacks are really going to catch it but uh your moisture is coming out of one and just going into the other so what you're wanting to do is is that bigger gap especially if they're two green stacks if you've got one like i've got right here that's dry a dry stack i mean then you can stack them a little bit closer but you still want a gap big enough that you can get that airflow because the faster you dry that lumber out the less mold you're gonna have humidity if you can cut i always try to cut oh, on low humidity months and in that way or weeks or whatever and knowing that you're gonna have that dry those dry conditions through the drying spell like september here is super dry and that's a perfect time to cut oh you won't, you know, the higher temperatures, the lower humidity, I'm going to say you can get, uh, you can turn wood out, be dry, dry enough to work with in, in a month's time, one inch thick, uh, two inch or inch and a half, something like that frame and stuff. Uh, you know, you, of course, you're going to give it a little bit longer, but uh, with good low humidity and, you know, pretty good temps, you know, 80, 90 degrees, it don't take long to dry it out. Now, if you are stacking in a barn like I'm stacking, a lot of times I'll drop a fan. I'll drop a fan in between, and you'll be pulling through one stack and pushing through another. So you're drying. You know, it's it's pulling it's pulling that moist there, but it won't be moist long. It'll start drying out, and then you'll start drying the other stack out. Or you can reverse it. You can just go back and forth and turn that fan around. But I've done that a lot of times, too, and it makes a lot of difference. But if you can just stack, if, you, if you've got the room to put the gap between the stacks and you're cutting green lumber, you know, you, you've, got, uh, you've got a three-foot gap between them, then you should be drying pretty good. Plus the fans, if you've got some fans to blow on it or blow down in it, it'll help. Anything to get that airflow and get that moisture out of there. Just wick it out of there. So, that's it, folks. That's all I got. I don't know. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Appreciate y'all.